another job is ready to leave SWRNC, and it's the 1977 yellow Honda. Now, we restored two of these cars for this guy, uh, same person. Let's go over the car, let's see what we got. So when the little car showed up, it was in really, really bad shape. Uh, to go ahead and make it even more exciting, this isn't the original car that we restored. Or should I say, this isn't the original car that he brought over here to restore. This was actually a parts car that he purchased in California and had shipped out here. Now the parts car that he shipped over, which is this one, was to be used on his red car for parts. And then he decided to go ahead and restore this one for his ex-girlfriend. Now, I don't know where that's leading, but, you know, I guess him and his ex-girlfriend are really, really close friends. And he wanted to do that for her. So, he went ahead and restored this car for his girlfriend. claims that this was the first car that he bought and then he bought his red car and he loved them so much that he wanted to have them restored. Now he did supply all the rubber parts and other miscellaneous parts for this car or should, should I say for his cars but the thing that he didn't supply for this car is the rubber felt right here. I'm the one that got that and I want to make sure and clear that everybody sees that this window rolls up in here perfect. Now, he did go ahead and supply this rubber here, the inner scraper as well. He supplied the door seal rubbers, which are kind of like the originals, but not identically exactly. So when you close the door, you can see that the door doesn't shut properly. And to really seal it properly, if it even seals at all, you got to slam the door shut to make it work right. He went ahead and supplied the rubber around here. Now, my opinion about the rubber on this, this is just universal rubber that you can buy anywhere. And then, of course, it has a uh, lip on it that you would tap around the metal. Um, I don't think that that rubber is actually made and designed for this car, but we'll go with that. He supplied the back window rubber 
The back window rubber really looks good. It came out nice. And then he also supplied this piece of rubber here, which I believe he said that he coincided with the guy that's making these to use a piece of his rubber to make it. So this here looks like it's okay. This seal here looks like it's probably the correct one. And then he supplied this rubber here, which is basically the same rubber. And you can see what I'm talking about here, how it has this, this piece right here that it's a pinch weld molding. And that's how that one's put on as well. So this is just universal pinch weld molding that is used on these. Nothing really special. Come on in here, Norm. What you got going? Got the trailer. We'll okay, we're going around. Right Look what we're doing here. We're going around the Honda. Now, the red Honda that we did for him, he said he loved the car. It was an awesome car. He said he told me it was a daily driver. He said he drives it every single day, and he has a lot of fun with it. Then, all of a sudden, he started coming up with all these excuses. Two years later. Okay? And his main excuses were the rubber. And this little video is about rubber. Okay? Do you see what I'm saying? I'm the one that found this rubber, and I'm the one that got the correct rubber. All right, this is aftermarket. You can clearly see that this is aftermarket, how it pinches out. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. And that's what you get when you restore these old cars. There's no way that you're going to get any aftermarket rubber that's going to be flawlessly perfect unless you know the precise measurements and you know the people where to get it and everything else. Do you see what I'm saying? I hear you, Pete. All right. So, we went around the car. What's your opinion on this yellow car, Norm? What are you thinking? It looks good. I How mean, does it look to you? It looks good. It's a, it's a Honda. It's a Honda. All right. I he, mean, they're cool old cars if you want to drive one. Right, right. I wouldn't want to drive one, but that doesn't mean anything. Okay. I didn't but pay for it. I'm saying, how does it look overall appearance? The work that was performed over here at SWRT, what would you say? I would say it's really good. You would say he got his money's worth? He got his money's worth. Okay. So that's the yellow car. We're going to go ahead and get the camera back out after they load it up. They're coming to get this thing today. I think it came out awesome. I really like it. I think it came out beautiful. Um, and there's nothing really more I could say. Can you say anything else about it? The amount of work in these little cars is amazing. It's just so yeah. much stuff. You would think because it's small it would be easier. You think it's a small car so it's going to be easier and it's not. It's not. I guarantee you, if I painted that car over here, I would have just as much work or more in this car due to the fact of its age and what had to be done to it to get it restored. Well, think about my 68 Roadrunner you painted. It didn't take near the time it took to do this. I'm telling you. And that car's twice the size. Three times as bigger. Three times. You know, let's, let's not mention all... Let me show everybody what's going on here. That's Let me show everybody what's going on. It's basically a wall, people. I say I'm going to go for it. Go stand up there. Here. But he got his money's worth. What he paid, he got. So we're going to get this thing loaded up. And hopefully when he gets the car, he's going to love it. Well, if he doesn't, it's too late now. So the story we just watched was about a Honda that I restored um, approximately a year and a half ago is when I finished it. The owner contacted me from California and he had two Hondas that he wanted to restore. A red one, which we restored completely and it turned out very beautiful and very awesome. And then we restored this yellow one 
Now, in the video, I tried to explain, but I did it briefly, that the yellow car was not the original car that we restored. Now, the owner claimed that the yellow car was actually his very first car, and it was his baby, and it was the best thing in the world. But when he bought a parts car and he had it sent out there, he said, let's go ahead and take everything off that car, the original one, the one that's my baby. I want to completely get it out, take everything off, motor, transmission. I even want the dashboard changed out in it. So basically, we used the uh, body on the Honda. Uh, normally, if he would have been a local guy in Dallas, I would have stripped it to bare metal and told him, I'm not doing it. I'll put your car back in epoxy primer for you. Um, the understanding is, and this is how I work with everybody, so if you are interested in my friend Pete restoring your car, I want you to listen very, very closely. The way that I operate on out-of-state restoration jobs is I will not commit to restoring your car until after we strip it down to bare metal and see every single piece of damage that's on it. When the owner delivered the rubber for the yellow car, I put all the rubber on and the felt channel would not fit in the tracks of the door. The windows would not roll up. On his red car, which I restored first, his windows did not roll all the way up. And I specifically told him dozens of times, the reason your windows won't roll up is because you have the wrong felt channel in them. So we got to the yellow car, and I take that back. We did not have the felt channel. I went ahead and precisely measured it and accurately devised the situation where I got the correct felt channel for the door. We put the felt channel in that I ordered on the yellow car and the window worked perfect. The owner of the red car complained off and on for ever since he had the car till up till the yellow car that I screwed his car up, the doors don't shut like they used to, the windows have never ever rolled up the way they used to. My car is a flooded out disaster. It leaks water everywhere. And he's blaming it on me. In this video you saw that when I shut the door on the car, he supplied the door seal rubbers which are kind of like the originals, but not identically exactly. So when you close the door, you can see that the door doesn't shut properly. It did not seal properly. And I had to slam the door. And to really seal it properly, if it even seals at all, you got to slam the door shut to make it work right. You also saw the back pop-out windows that all it had on there, the rubber that they sell for those cars, is basically camper topper rubber. He went ahead and supplied the rubber around here. Now, my opinion about the rubber on this, this is just universal rubber that you can buy anywhere. And then, of course, it has a uh, lip on it that you would tap around the metal. Um, I don't think that that rubber is actually made and designed for this car, but we'll go with that. It's a camper topper rubber seal is what it is. You take this big roll of this rubber that has this metal coated, rubberized coating metal clamp, and then you take a little hammer and you go around the pinch weld with it, with a rubber mallet. And then when you get to the end, okay, you start here, go all the way around, when you get to the end, you cut it off and then you butt it up and if you want to use some rubber uh, you know sealer adhesive shit to put it together that's fine do that okay you can um, when I put the rubber on one of the windows on the back it would not close at all and I forced it to close and the little latch broke on me the little latch that holds the window broke because that's the wrong rubber 
Is that my fault? Is that my fault that this guy's car leaks because the rubber he purchased is not OEM original NOS factory rubber? But this is a prime example of aftermarket stuff. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. I busted my ass and restored these cars. Any other shop in America that would have restored those two Hondas and did all the work that I did, he would have spent double what he spent with me. Um, this little job, and this is the conclusion of this whole situation, I was actually friends with this guy, and by me restoring his cars and him purchasing aftermarket rubber and then not working properly, it ruined our relationship as a friend. Because I am not going to sit here and take the badgering of how I screwed him around and his car leaks water when I explained to him a hundred times, it's the felt channel. Hopefully when he got his yellow car back and he looked at the felt channel that I bought versus the felt channel he got, he hopefully went ahead and got a glass guy to change the felt channel out. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, at SWRNC, my friend Pete, YouTube channel. Please subscribe at the bottom of the description of this video. And also, while you're at it on your subscription job, if you want to subscribe, please give me a thumbs up on this video and also comment and tell me what you would have done in a situation like this. And how would you have fixed the situation of having rubber that doesn't work. I don't understand. I don't know. All I know is I did a Class A top-notch job on restoring both the vehicles for this guy at a very reasonable discount rate. Cheaper than anybody else, obviously, because he sent them all the way from California. So obviously, okay, there's millions of shops that could have done it. And I'm sure one of the reasons he sent it to me is because I fucking do it cheaper than everybody else. And you get more for your money with me. I don't know. I gotta go. Take it easy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Really wasn't nothing. But then on the other hand, it was something.